exploring Manchester's Lost Canal Tunnel, the Manchester Salford Junction Canal. The Discovery In 1974 I was invited by British Rail to explore beneath the catacombs of Manchester Central Railway Station, now known as the GMEX Centre. We clambered down a huge pile of illegally tipped rubbish that had somehow found its way below ground, filling a large hole in the undercroft of the station. Ahead of me was a brick wall. As we hit the bricks with a hammer and chisel, we could hear the debris falling into what seemed a huge bottomless cavern. I pushed my camera and flash gun through the hole and pressed the shutter. The resulting picture only served to confuse matters further. What on earth had we discovered? The background story. The River Irwell was once the main commercial artery with numerous boats and barges transporting goods between the two cities of Manchester and Liverpool. When the canals arrived in the 1760s, they bypassed the river. The Duke of Bridgewater taking his canal over the river on a superb aqueduct built by the great canal engineer James Brindley. Boat traffic from the River Irwell got access to the main canal system via locks at Hume, originally owned by the Duke of Bridgewater. The Bridgewater trustees' monopoly led to high tolls being charged at the locks, and it was soon suggested that another canal be built to bypass the locks and join the nearby Rochdale Canal. An Act of Parliament was needed to build the new canal and tunnel, this new canal, which opened in 1838, to be known as the Manchester and Salford Junction Canal. The Bridgewater trustees immediately reduced their tolls and the canal became a white elephant overnight. A trip up the canal. Let's begin our virtual exploration at the river lock. Boats came into the canal from the River Irwell at a special lock on the side of the river. Drawings of the period show that it was constructed in such a way as to prevent the river actually inundating the canal in times of flood. So what was the river lock like? In 1974 it was in a sorry state as the pictures show. Today it's a feature of the nearby riverside development, nothing like the original lock but at least it's possible to see where it was. The tunnel. There was a second lock beyond the river lock, giving access to a large pool where boats waited for their turn to go into the tunnel. The tunnel, some 400 yards long, was originally lit by gaslight and had a towpath throughout its length, as this ARP photo taken in 1939 shows. The Exploration The river end of the tunnel has now completely disappeared and is the site of Granada Television Studios. At the end of a corridor near one of the main studios is an iron door, and behind that door is the tunnel. In 1974 I led a team of specialists into the tunnel to discover what was left. Everyone thought it would be easy to walk along the canal towpath, but as we soon discovered, the tunnel had been used during the Second World War as an air raid shelter, and special bomb blast walls had been constructed across its width, throughout its length, and it was flooded. In some places we could see stalactites growing from the brickwork in the tunnel. Above us was Camp Street, which leads to Deansgate. It was clear that this section of the canal had been constructed as a trench, and then arched over with brick to make a tunnel. The canal tunnel soon entered the sandstone near Deansgate and became a true tunnel. Everywhere were the remains of the World War II air raid shelter, such as the iron frame beds on which people were forced to spend the night during an air raid. The Elson chemical toilets and the air raid warden's tin hat still lying there on the canal towpath. Progress exploring the lost section of the canal had been slow, but we were soon able to walk on a raised dry concrete surface put in during the construction of the air raid shelter. 
We were now beneath the top end of Deansgate, approaching the great northern goods warehouse. There, ahead in the gloom, was a large open area, once an underground canal dock. From the edge of the dock is a short tunnel leading to a hoist well that took goods to and from the great northern goods warehouse above. The dock is a late arrival, being built at the same time as the Great Northern Goods Warehouse around 1909, some 50 years after the opening of the canal. These photographs, taken in 1938, show what it used to be like. Notice the sunken boats and the cast-iron mooring bollard. You can almost imagine a dozen or more boats moored side by side next to the old dock. Evidence for use of the tunnel as an air raid shelter during the Second World War is everywhere. It's hard to believe that these steps once echoed to the sound of people hurrying below ground during an air raid warning. This was the point where the tunnel originally came out into the daylight. It was also the place, indicated by the arrow, where we knocked through the wall and I took my photograph all those years ago of Manchester's forgotten canal tunnel. Beyond the tunnel. Boats were raised up in a double rise lock into the pool above. There was also a huge steam engine pumping water back to the top of the locks from within the tunnel to conserve the water. Our map shows the canal in open land before major extensions were made to Manchester Central Station, which was built straddled over the canal on brick arches the canal being operational until as late as 1922. The canal finally emerged out into the daylight from the extended Manchester Central Station near to the old East Street bus depot, now the site of the Bridgewater Concert Hall. From here the canal did a sort of right-hand turn going beneath Great Bridgewater Street to finally join the Rochdale Canal. Apart from this, there is only one other easily accessible visual reminder of this brilliant piece of Victorian engineering, and it's in a surprising place. A passageway leads concert goers from the car park at the GMEX Centre to the Bridgewater Concert Hall. Look closely at ground level in the underpass, and there can clearly be seen the stone blocks of the old canal towpath of Manchester's Lost Canal. <laughs>